everyone. Maybe you remember my very first video here on YouTube in which I built an entire Turnip28 army out of yellow QB soldier boys. That was for last year's yellow cube challenge and this year the challenge is back but this time it's not about making the miniatures but writing a game. And I thought about it, well how can I make a game about cubes? And then it hit me, a die or dice are cubes. So I wanted to focus on the dice and some of my favorite board games are push your luck kind of games. Where you take dice, you roll them and you have some success but maybe you can push it just a little bit further but in most cases I push it too far and lose it all and I want to make that the core mechanic of my war game the first war game I ever wrote and I'm in the process of writing it right now but in order to figure some rules out play around I want to build a prototype of course so in this video we're gonna make the miniatures for my prototype I want some infantry I want some leaders and I want a tank and I want to make it weird world war-ish like QB boys with guns and of course a cool tank or a weird tank <laughs> would be more appropriate so let's see what we can come up with and put some cubes to some bodies to get the prototype started and to make some cubes for our cube heads we need some green stuff first. I'm cutting away the part where the blue and yellow parts meet because it's already hardened there and then I just squish it around. If you never used green stuff before it's a bit hard, harder than milliput for example, but this hardness is exactly what we're looking for in this case because using milliput it would be too soft and making a geometrical shape would be much harder. Next I want to make copies of my little cube and for that I'm boiling up some water to soften up my blue stuff. This is awesome for making simple molds of heads or yeah, just any simple body part or weapons because you just soften it up in hot water, mush it around and you put anything in there to make a mold of it. Here I'm making like a QB shape to put a cube inside, cubes inside cubes. This is what this challenge is all about. It's all about them cubes, baby. So after a while, like 10 minutes, the blue stuff is hardened up when it's cold. I just pick out my little green stuff bit and we have a finished mold. And the easiest stuff to use is UV resin for this because it's already liquid. It's one part. You don't need to mix up some two part epoxy or anything like that. Just a dab in there, get the light going and after five to six minutes it's hard and we can get it out of the blue stuff shell. The great thing about blue stuff is it is reusable. I've been using this blue stuff for all my projects for the last two years now and it's a pretty good mold and if there are bubbles or anything like that well that just adds to the charm. So we do this about 25 times <laughs> to have a whole lot of cubes and we have to clean them up a bit. I'm a professional so don't worry I just cut myself a bit while doing this and after cleaning it up it's time to get them to some bodies. I use these from War Games Atlantic and we're just building them up except for the heads because that's where our cube goes. With a bit of super glue filling it on there sometimes using different angles and moving them around so that we have some individuality with our little guys and they're looking proper QB but we need some leaders some character models and I got these second world war special models and I wanted to do a little dog as well look at this little papa but the heads sadly have to come off 
I'm snipping them all over the room. One, two, three. And after a little bit of cleaning up, they should be ready to get some cubes. Because in the game of Innocence, I was thinking about making them all uniform because they are all possessed by the cube, but that would be too boring. We need some leaders in there and they can be anything you want. Even the theme isn't as fixed. So if you don't want to use great war managers, you can use Second World War, you can use Neapolitan, whatever. But I really like the early 20th century military look for the game because it has this kind of ominous look to it. If we look at all of those guys standing together, you see what I mean. And since this is an Apocrypha Now challenge, we have to build a tank. Ben loves his tanks, I love him too. So we're just using these wooden cubes as a base, gluing them together with some wood glue and leaving a hole for this gun, filling out the hole with aluminum foil. And then I'm using my beloved milliput, way easier to use than green stuff. We just mix the two parts together and I just mush it on there, trying to get a uniform surface and this is the time to feel like a kid again. <laughs> Just getting out your Play-Doh, or in this case Milliput, smush it around, getting it all over there and building some silly stuff. I'm adding these wheels to it. Very silly, wouldn't work on any battlefield. <laughs> Big tank with wheels, but in my headcanon, in the lore of innocence, this is an alive thing, so we need to get it more like biological looking. <laughs> and so whatever this is I'm forming here <laughs> with the help of some water and my sculpting tool, well, you can just fill in the blanks for yourself. It's a living thing. It has some organic stuff and the gun is kind of growing right out of there. And this was really fun. I was grossing myself out a bit while doing this, but that's when I know that I'm onto something. And it looked a bit too uniform, so I thought I'd do some bumps. So just adding some more milliput, getting it smooth, blending it in with lots of water. And after the tank is hardened, I used some green putty. This is available from several manufacturers. Just don't get the one from Games Workshop. The pot it comes in will dry out immediately. And with this, I'm just smoothing out the surface. And of course, we need some mud on our little tank because it lives and breathes on the battlefield. That's where it belongs, so we make it proper muddy. And with that, it's already time to prime our little cube tree. That's the name I found for these little guys. And I'm just using my airbrush because it is more convenient. You can use any black primer for this. And the painting will be extremely easy using this dark gray with my little makeup brush, my trusty fellow, just getting most of it out of there. We don't want it too dry and we give it a good dusting with the darker gray, leaving the black in the recesses. Easy peasy dry brushing everywhere we need it. For example, on the wheels of a little living cube and we want to keep it ultra simple so we're just taking another slightly brighter gray another dusting just on the utmost parts of the miniature to give it some contrast and we can go a bit overboard at this stage because we're gonna darken it back down with a black wash a bit later in the process now I'm mixing white 
into the light gray to give it a final highlight because we want to have them simple but we don't want to have them boring. And now I'm priming the cube heads because if we were to just slap on yellow onto the black it wouldn't work at all and it wouldn't be bright. So after three coats of white we got this great little band ready for some sol yellow from scale color one of my favorite yellows it is not very opaque but it has a lovely tint and it is super bright sol yellow means sun yellow and this really does the job so that we can get the maximum amount of contrast with the infantry it only took three layers because the surface wasn't that big and it did the trick already. The fourth layer didn't look any different than the third one so I stayed with three. With the living cube it was a different story to be honest. It took me 15 coats of yellow to get an opaque surface. <laughs> to give the yellow a bit more depth I used some orange contrast paint mixed down with medium and I just slap it on and then I blend it in with some water trying to get the whole surface not letting it splotch and getting rid of the excess with a paper towel. Where I wanted more contrast I applied some more paint and then I used different shades of yellow mixed with white to give it some texture and some interest because if it is just yellow it would be a bit too boring and we want to get this kind of puss bubbly look <laughs> to really pop because in my mind this living cube it's like moving it's kind of jelloey it's pulsating it is making groany weird noises and if I have a story or like a character like that in my mind I want to bring it to life on the battlefield with the painting because in my mind that's what painting is for that's why we paint our miniatures to make them live on the battlefield and in the games we are playing for the earth and mud I'm using my favorite color dryad bark this is the air variety it's already mixed so I just without any water I'm doing it 90s style at least what I did in the 90s going straight into the pot getting the color out and slapping it on to get this nice muddy base and with another warm brown I'm doing a little bit of a dry brush just to get the texture from our ground texture out of there and to blend it in a little wash with the old faithful agrix earth shade and another old faithful known oil the old formula <laughs> to slap on all the black parts just to blend the grays in a bit more and get some more shadows in the recesses and the same color mixture we applied to the living cube is now applied to the smaller cubes blending it in with a bit of water a technique somewhere between feathering and wet blending but we're not wet blending with two colors but just with water we could layer orange acrylic paint on there and do like 10 little steps out of it but we want to do it quick and dirty so just applying the yellow again over our messy orange wash will suffice and to make them really pop our little cube heads we are applying my favorite thing and highlight with pure white good old edge highlighting on a cube doesn't get any easier well maybe it does get easier because just slapping on one layer of brown paint on the base might take the cake for easiest step in 
a painting process of very easy steps. But why make it hard on ourselves when we can get a great result with very easy techniques. And so lastly, I'm mixing the Nuln oil with a bit of medium to slap it all over the black and gray parts. Just the same multi tank a bit before and I'm re-establishing some of the highlights with the white and gray mix just to get a real nice contrast on them. And for me, this is what the yellow cube aesthetic is all about. It's the maximum amount of contrast. We got the black bodies with the yellow heads. You can see those miniatures from a mile away and to get them done, the last thing we need is a good black rim. Always remember to blacken thy rim because a neatly painted base rim makes all the difference. And with that, our little prototype is done. Well, here we have the finished prototype. Very striking color scheme, just as with the first army. Some people say they aren't painted at all, but I love abstract and minimalist painting schemes. The yellow is so striking and I really think the tank came out great. And for the prototype, I want to split this up into two forces, have some games for the game that I now coined Innocence. A normal war game with regular cubes because they are just innocent men because it's, in the end it's a cube more or less fighting itself read it up in the supplement <laughs> I think the great thing about the yellow cube is it always imposes more questions that it gives answers but that's a lovely thing but in my next video I will give you all the answers about how to play the game. The beta rules are up right now. You can go to my Patreon and download the rules for free and try the game out. And together with you, just reach out to me via Instagram, here in the comments or on the Patreon. We can make Innocence into a great game Right now, I only have three units, one scenario, the basic rules, so we can make a start at the game and see where it leads us. Because what I love most about wargaming is the community. And I not only want to be part of the challenge, but I want to evolve the game with all of you guys. And the biggest supporters that I have are, of course, my patrons on patreon.com and my newest patrons are Simon K, Nate, Dan I or Dan the First, Mickey Nielsen in the $5 tier and in the $5 tier Greg in a Basket. Thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you to all my patrons, all the commenters here on YouTube, on Instagram. You guys are the best and I love making silly stuff for and with you. And on the Patreon, you get access to the Orca Boot Podcast and to Patreon exclusive videos. And shortly there will be the second one. The first one is about the great board game Talisman and the second one will be about my favorite role-playing game, tabletop role-playing game, Dread. So, Check that out if you're interested and I hope to see you in the next video when we take a look at the rules and I show you how to play Innocence. But for now, let's look at these miniatures in more detail in these glory shots. Thank you all. Bye bye.